the Musical Fiction Alliance of America proudly presents Northside Gal, written by Dave Benrexi, narrated by Michael Skipper, featuring the voices of Karen Egan, Tiffany Kaminsky, Tom DeWild Kinney, Vincent Lippiello, Rick Reynolds, Marcy Shore, Tim Stiles, Brittany Bunko, and Kelly Benrexi. Northside Gal is directed by Dave Benrexi and Chris Tidstrom. Chapter One. An encounter at the hangout. Somewhere tonight down the sixty six. So totally, Allison. She always calls precisely when Zebra Jam is beginning to find their groove. Brad clicked her off twice, but that didn't stop the buzzing in his denim cutoffs. I better take this. I'm sorry. He laid down his sunburst Les Paul and reached in his pocket. What's up? Honey, I'm at the hangout. You gotta get down here right away. Can I meet you in an hour, Al? Brad, I need you now. Why? Is something wrong? Oh, just forget it. Listen, Al, if you really need me. I mean, if this can't wait till later. I said mind, okay? I'm so sorry I bothered you. Okay, all right. I get the point, okay? Just give me ten minutes, all right? Zeb and Jamar nodded and sighed as Brad threw his gear together. He apologized for the umpteenth time and rushed out the door. He ran, gasping for air as thunder shook the sky. He was fairly drenched when he arrived at the diner. Allison met him at the door holding a plastic shopping bag. Quick, Brad, go slip this on. Dirk's coming. I've been telling him how sharp you are. Dirk? Are you kidding me? This is what couldn't wait? Oh, terrific. Now, Brad, don't prejudge. It's about our future, okay? And I think it's looking up, but we'll just give him a chance. That's all I'm asking. Just give him a chance and we can talk about it later, okay? She was waiting at their usual table when he emerged from the john in the new shirt, khakis, and sports jacket she'd bought him. Coles was having a sale. Too good to pass up. And, well, you do look snazzy, babe. Dirk told me you can pull in a thousand a week easy, right away, or even more. We could get our own digs, Brad, someplace real nice. Brad squared his jaw. And you've known this guy for how long? A whole three weeks? Try a whole month, Smarty. And he's making some serious money. You're not turning into one of those anti-money 60s guys, are you? Selling ads, please. Allison gritted her teeth. That's what successful businesses do, Brad. The hangout's in our August movie guide, right on the back cover. You don't think Edie and Floyd would do it if they didn't bring them new customers, do ya? A beautiful blonde waitress stopped at the table. Hi, what can I get you folks? Turkey club, extra mayo, and a Diet Pepsi. Her soft blue eyes left him speechless. Do you need a little more time? I can come back in a couple minutes. He'll have a bowl of chili, dear. Oh, and a chocolate milkshake. Just the shake. Dear Lord, she's amazing. Brad watched the waitress sashay back to the kitchen. Allison grabbed his face and twisted it toward her. What am I going to do with you? So where's your buddy Dirk? She looked at her watch. Help me here. I just wanted to make sure you were presentable. Oh, terrific. You know how much I hate jive talkers, Al. He raised his water glass with feigned enthusiasm. Well, I've got just the thing for you, sir. Why, yes, ma'am, you'll be the envy of all the other ladies. What color would you like it in? Mauve or chartreuse? Chartreuse? Well, that's my favorite color, too. Will you accept delivery tomorrow evening, or is Friday morning more convenient? Zip it, Brad, okay? He's here. Dirk swaggered to the table, reeking of cologne. Don't get up. Bending over, he gave Allison a convivial peck and stuck out his hand. Brad, a pleasure to finally meet you. Dirk Killingbeck. She told me you're a handsome guy, Brad, but then what else would you expect a fabulous fox like Allie to be keeping company with? It's really good to meet you, you lucky son of a gun. I hear you're a recent populist grad. Theater, right? Yeah. Going for your MFA? Maybe later. I'm kind of burned out on school. But you want to be an actor, right? Well, I... You certainly have the looks, Brad, so who's your favorite actor? I like John Cusack. Really? Dirk clapped his hands together. He's one of my favorites, too. Isn't that something? Yeah, Brad, I saw him just the other night in that baseball movie, you know? Eight men out. 
Yep, the one about the Black Sox, right? Yeah. Great film, superb. And he was the one that wouldn't go for it, right? The shortstop, I believe. Third base. All oh, right, Buck, a uh, Buck. Weaver. Yeah, old Buck Weaver, the only one with an ounce of integrity. But that sanctimonious old judge bans him for life anyway. Why? Because he didn't rat on the others. He gives his best effort, and the judge bans him for baseball for life. I thought that was so wrong, Brad, didn't you? Oh, yes, totally wrong. Yeah, maybe a suspension, like a half a year or something, but banned for life? Allison checked her makeup as the waitress took Dirk's order. He, too, paid tribute with his eyes as he asked her for a club steak, medium rare. The recruiting campaign was on, all about how important it is to advertise and all the opportunities this creates for people with ambition, discipline, and creativity to make a six-figure income. But know this, success doesn't happen unless you're willing to pay the price. Dirk flashed his fancy cufflinks and manicured fingernails as Brad feigned interest. Dirk looked at his Raymond Wilde Steel Cosa Grande watch. We better get back, Allie. Corporate's calling at 3.30 for the end of the month numbers. Brad, it's been a real pleasure. He whipped out a business card and grabbed the check. Just give me a holler, Brad, when you're ready to sit down with me and talk turkey. Capiche? Brad nodded impassively as Allison exited with Dirk's hand on her lower back. Can I get you something else? The gorgeous waitress' gentle manner roused him from his funk. No, I'm good, thanks. He took a final glance at her on his way out. It was impossible not to. Mufik sets you free.